Howdy, I'm Cyberax with Outlandishly Crafted, and today we're talking about, what are we talking about? We're going to be talking about real world locations and Minecraft maps. So we want to get these Minecraft maps to be just, just like real world maps. <clears throat> so what in essence we're doing is we're taking topo the topology of the maps of the landscaping we're going to import it into world painter then we're going to convert it from java to bedrock and then we're going to put it in our game so this takes a good amount of time days um it takes a good amount of ram so if you're on a system with you know eight gigs of ram um or some crazy low number this may not be doable in a reasonable amount of time if you want to do something large what i'm trying to do is about a 40 to 80 mile area of where i live so this is western colorado and i live right about there right right there somewhere so I want to take this and make it into a Minecraft map. Now, there's a horrible amount of ways to do this. There's insane amounts of um, different mechanisms and, and different ways to get the actual files and the topology and all of the different things. And then there's how detailed and how qual high quality is it? Do you put a few of them together? You know, the maximum amount of PNG space. Uh, you can see this is four quadrants stuck together for getting the whole the whole side. And let's pull up um, Google Earth really quick and I'll show you what this looks like. So here is what we're looking at. We have Utah border and then it, we want to get this lake. So the goal is to get this box. And so that's what this one is now. So you can kind of see how they compare. So this is Grand Mesa. This is top of the world. Um, and that's this guy. And then there's some higher peaks off here. Um, we really want this to be 320. So build, build height cap, maybe 300 is here. And we don't, we just want to cut those out. So, you know, it might even be that we need to stop and trim um this back so you can see the river comes down and then there's a delta here and then olathe so the river comes down and then there's the delta oh no the river goes off over here um and that lake we want i think is right here Okay, so really quick, let's start with how do we get a topology map? So to get a topology map, you use the USGS website if you're in the US or if you're in a different country, use a di whatever the government system is. Or There's a whole bunch of these for Earth, and USGS actually might have your area as well. Um, there's a whole bunch of steps to getting this and there's a whole bunch of variables. And so this guide, um, importing real world heights into unreal engine is a really good guide that I would suggest you actually watch, um, to go through this process. And there's another one here, creating unreal engine landscapes with real world. Um, I would go through these guides. I'm not going to go through the process of making, um, the topology map because that's in essence its own thing and hordes and hordes of game guides and games use this method already so i'm not going to go through that however i do want to mention that some programs will normalize this data 
so that that's not a sharp curve right there. It's not a drop off, you know, that these become hills and just in case it's not normalized. <clears throat> so you may want to put this in um, a trained software or put it in Adobe or put it in something in and normalize this out just a little before you use it. You'll have to just kind of trial and error it. So now that we have <clears throat> what we're doing, how do we do it? So we're going to take and we're going to import in a new map and we're going to do it from a height map. <clears throat> so you can see height map here. We don't want to change our stuff. We have all of them here and I have all kinds of different ones. I'm going to use this smooth version. And it's going to then bring it in to our viewer. Now from here, we have a few options to flip it. If it's inverted, we can say what version we're working in. We can say what presets we want. And then we can go through all of the other settings in here. We could scale it out. Um, we could change the water level and we could say, well, the max, we really want the max to be 230 is gonna be three, say 10. And we're doing that because we want this mountain peak to be at built height. So this mountain peak should be at the very top. And then if we move up here, that'll give us an idea of where these and the other ones will be. Now, the next step to this is we want to go through and we want to set up what materials are going to be at what heights. So we want snow. Yep, that's good. Since we changed that height, now there's going to be snow on the very tip of this guy, which is what we want, the very top of that. And then we could say, well, we want our uh, water level to be at minus 40. And so that's going to push the water down to give us much taller mountains. So we can have a much higher mountain system and then the water system could be much lower. Um, now, keep in mind that this will break on a normal vanilla map. If you're going to have normal generation around it, then you're going to have these huge cliffs of water out there on the edges because once you get out of your custom map, it'll just start doing natural generation after that. Now, you could make that void. You could make that other things. Um, you could do a flat world and lower the water level. You, you could also just put the water level at 70 like normal. Um, in my opinion, we've just, we're wasting so much downward space. It's never going to be used. I'd rather lower the entire world to zero or minus 60. And then you would mine into the mountains would be the goal. Just like we normally do do in real life you know typically we mine into mountains we don't mine straight down um, unless we're looking for you know oil or stuff that isn't minecraft mining so you really want to be mining into all these mountains um, and then so we have we also have layers so then the layers can say, well, I want from 128 to 300 to have some caves. I want it to have some delicious um, down to 0 to 120. And this could actually now be minus um, 50 because we have, uh, we moved the water level down. And then above 300, we want to have frost. 0, we want to have population. And this could also be now minus 50. And then we also want to have pine, um, that's fine. And then resources, uh, resources could actually be, you know, 64 to, oh, wow, will it not let me do that? Minus 63 to 319. So resources can be anywhere in there. Okay, so now we've got our resources set up. Um, we've got all of our stuff set up. We changed our numbers for height map. We So above 319 is going to get cut off, which is fine. Our water's at minus 40. Let's make that minus 50. Um, zero. We should say 39. 
And we could actually drop off. I don't think we want to drop off anything. So we're going to say 39. And then I do that all the time. I hit enter and then it just goes. So make sure when you do that, you save that theme template um, so that you don't have to rebuild all of that data every time. I double entered there, so it just started going, which is annoying. So <clears throat> the next piece of this is it's going to import that in. We're going to see what it is, and then we could actually go through and customize the terrain, the biomes, um, annotations. We could put in you know population areas, places that we want it to spawn, um, villages and all of this stuff so if we really wanted to customize the biomes per the map we really could so we could go say well this part of the map is mountains and this part of the map is sandstone and we could more detail it and then after that we're going to export it now exporting a map like this is three to you know 10 hours of work with 48 gigs of ram on a high-end system so is this is one of those things that when you do the export you're going to let it go overnight and then the um, java map to bedrock converter takes another few hours so between those you're going to have you know a good chunk of hours that you need to just let the system do its thing you can minimize it and put it in the background um, is also an option Let's see so we've got our mountain range we've got our other stuff everything looks pretty good we've got our snow there um, I don't know if we're gonna get any water I might have put the water too low it feels like the whole thing's not reacting and rendering to me you can do this um, 3d view which is really fun this is really helpful so we can see that okay we've got a pretty good conceptual map um, oh beautiful okay so right here we've got Mount Garfield and then I live, oh wow, it did, it filled in, that's that's not perfect, the water actually follows up, but the problem with the top topo map is the world's round, and so you can't put flat water in, you're going to have to find your base lake, and then you're going to have to fill all of this with water, um, and I would do that in World Painter, I'd, in World Painter I'd just paint that water all the, oops, all the way up the map. So let's see what this is going to look like. Um, full map. I'm amazed it's rendering this actually. Going to drink some of my tea. Wow, that's really cool. Wow. Okay, so here's my mountains. <clears throat> I love that there's a mix of green in there and it looks mountainy. Um, this is definitely desert here and then it does get a little, I, it's funny, I should just show a picture of it. Um, this is called book cliff, so this is really just sandstone and nasty crap. There's not very much growth in there, but at the top there's some. So that looks really cool. Um, and then there's some stone. That stone probably could be moved down a little. Um, or that could be beach or something. And then, yeah, the water could have been just a little bit more up. <clears throat> but wow. That's epic. So I live right about here-ish, somewhere in there. <clears throat> and for this map, what I want to do is I want to be able to hike in the map through this through here up into here all the way back into here to that lake so that lake is back in here and i want to be able to walk this 
Um, it should take about 20 hours if you walked it going in real life. <clears throat> 24 hours <clears throat> if you walked it in real life. So you'd go up the mountain, you'd go over the pass, and then you'd show up at the lake. Um, in game right now, this is only a two hour, a three hour walk, um, across the whole thing. So you, we'd want to expand this. That's why I have this, um, this one that we're using as our image is 36 megabytes. <clears throat> now, so that's. 15,000 pixels but I have one that's this one that's 32,000 pixels so this is four of those put together to give a much more detailed um, size I just didn't want to use it right now because it's massive and I haven't figured out how to remove these lines so see this line going through there that's just a massive wall in the game so I need to go through and fix that. The problem is that's 32,000 pixels. Uh, Photoshop and Adobe products max out at 16,000 pixels, so they can't even read this file or modify it. Um, and so there's, there's just not a lot I can do. So here we go. So we've got this whole guy. The next step is we're going to export it to a new Minecraft map. So we're going to export it, and we're going to say whatever it is, survival, none of this really matters. Um, and we put it somewhere, and then we do export. Now, this is where I'm saying you go to bed. So you do this at night, and then you just go off to bed. It'll start by saying three hours, and then it'll go to five hours and whatever. But it was done this morning just fine. Now, once we finish that, it's going to give us a Java map. Okay. So we're then going to take J E B or oh, sorry, J E two B E, um, which is on the micro my, no, the Microsoft store in windows. This is the best converter I found. And we're going to go to Java to bedrock. And then we're going to select in our directory, our map that we just made. And when you finish the map, it's going to ask you where to save it. So once this project's done, it's going to, or sorry, it already did. Um, but it'll give you a map. So then we're going to click go. It pulls the map and then it starts converting it. And then this is another like two hour process. Okay. So once you've done both of these processes, then you're going to have yourself a Minecraft map, just a bedrock Minecraft map. Now, this is what we were just working on. And the choppiness is just because I have the render distance set it as, as high as the graphics card can do. But what I did here is I, well, I messed it up. And it's going to take too many hours to redo it for the video. But this is it. I just, I scaled it by 9999 and stretched it so that it would be a 10 hour walk. But what that did is it took all of my mountains and it flattened them. So all of that stuff that we saw, it's just all been flattened because 9999 scale just in essence took all those pixels and just broke them down to instead of being three or 400 height, it's now five to 10 height. So that's my fault. If we um, surfed through here enough, we would probably find the Mesa. It'd be the, you know, one of the highest points still, but it's still only going to be a few blocks tall, you know, because I, I janked it. Now, remember this took all night to make, and so tonight I'll get another one and I'll try again. And this is kind of just the process of going through. Oh, here we go. Here's one of our, here's one of our mountains. <laughs> there it is. That's no, I'm just kidding. But that, that would be one of our, one of our peaks. So 
Pretty cool, um, but it gives you a good idea of what we're talking about, how this works. You can start seeing as we're going out here, it, it does get lower and you start to see where the water kicks in. Um, even if you, this is just a complete failure, it still shows you how, how cool using natural generation can be, uh, or real world generation, I guess you would say, <clears throat> versus, um, the, the end game stuff, the engine stuff. So if you've got something nearby and you want to do your town or your area, or you were thinking, man, I really have this cool lake area. It'd be fun to do. I would definitely start with a smaller segment and do, you know, a small piece just to get started. And then I would start pushing out from there and building it bigger and bigger and bigger. I did the same thing in unreal engine and brought this map over there, which was really fun. So you could play it in Unreal as well. Um, but I think in the long run, it, it's it. I'd love to see more real world maps get um, added in. Just size wise, to give you an idea, this is a because it was nine 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 nine. I have no idea what the size was. It was massive. It's a you know 10, 15 hour walk from one side to the other in game. Um, it was like 3.5 gigs, which isn't very big for a custom app. That's not too bad. Um, but keep in mind, custom apps do have size to them because it's not being generated in the world. And then on your first save, after you load the custom map, it may take a while to save it. So I always suggest uh, opening the map once and then saving it before you actually start playing on the map or loading it up as a server just to make sure that the map loads and everything's in there. So that's it. I'm CyberX with Outlandishly Crafted, and this has been, you know, not a very good demo of what you can do, but it, it's giving you an idea of the process. Um, it, it does take some work and some skill just to, to learn through all of this and, and trial and error some of these things and figure out best practices for what you want to do. But I think it gives you a cool idea of where where we can go with this and just how powerful it is um, to be able to add in natural world gen. So thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or other guides you'd like to see, uh, put them in the comments and make sure and like and subscribe and ring that bell. Keep the overlords happy. And thanks for watching.